Cobra there. So, so hello, my name's Rob. This is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. Uh, I've messed up a little bit like that. I started filming some bits for um, the Brutalis Dreadnought and um, I got halfway through and realised I deleted the files of me talking about the sprues and then for some reason I don't know what I've done with my script. So I thought, Do you know what, it's going to be a lot easier for me to just sit down. I've got a nice cup of tea on the go just here and I thought we would look at the sprues together and do it. People can rewatch it and stuff like that. So I just thought it was a little bit easier to do it this way. So if you're watching from the future, hi, how are you? Um, it's Monday. Um, it's actually been a really nice day here in the UK. It's about, um, apparently it's going to about 21 degrees. I don't know what that is in um, Fahrenheit. Guten Tag. Guten Tag, bro. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, you know, so it's um, it's Celsius all the way here. It's been really, really nice, actually. So I just thought, you know what? It's nice. The kids are happy. I don't know what they're doing. Um, let's let's have a look at the Brutalis Dreadnought. Um, so it's been a hot minute since I've done a Dreadnought. I've done a Contemptor. I've done a little one. Um, I did some Redemptors back when I had my very, 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 very first Warhammer 40,000 army, which was Space Wolves. Um, I actually had two, one with the Gatling gun and the fist one with the plasma gun and the fist, and they were actually named after my daughters. Um, so it was cool. But that was about, whoa, four years ago. So I'm really excited about doing this. And there's a little bit of a, a story. I'm going to talk you through a little bit of a concept as well that i got going on, obviously, on the, the big Dark Angels <sighs> hype at the moment. Um, so the Brutalis. So from what I can see, or what I remember, and <laughs> I don't remember a lot most days, uh, that it goes together quite similar to the the actual, like, the Redemptor kit that we have now. Obviously, the multi-part one, the armor panels are separate. You get a choice of the face plates uh, in here. Obviously, you get this twin-mounted gun, which will obviously replace the, I think, the Icarus launcher, it's normally called. So you've got the the twin guns that go together. These are very reminiscent of the, uh, the big twin guns. I forget what they're called. The Condemptor uh, has... Uh, on one loadout. I did have some at hand, but I actually cleaned up my desk the other day and I, I put loads of stuff in the box. Um, have ye got a brew? Of course I got, I'm British. I don't do anything without a brew. Look at that, it's the color of He-Man, it's perfect. Um, and then I think the only thing that really differs is his, what I like to call the nipple guns, which are down here, you can have flamers, uh, or I think there's another option. Uh, you can have the yeah you you have the I think the flame I think the I think the flamers and all the like the little bolt things. Um, I'm not sure what to go with actually for the Dark Angels. I might decide that a little bit last. Um, obviously they are designed to move and not glued down. Same with this. I think it just slots in there so it can swivel. Don't really see the point of it in all honesty. Um, you know, same with this. You can kind of have it open and stuff like that. And then obviously the, the new. The new bits, uh, obviously he's got his um, arms. <clears throat> so you go down to, it gives you a choice of leg options. There's some little pegs, we'll, we'll go over this in a minute. There's some little pegs so you can position the legs. Kind of cool. Um, you could probably pose them a lot easier um, if you are a bit more competent. You could probably shave the pegs off, do them with his foot up, bending a knee. Uh, the way it goes together is very multi-part, so you could actually get some really cool poses, I would imagine. Uh, on this type of thing. Uh, but once again, you've got your two options for legs. I'll probably just stick to this um, as I'll probably jazz it up in some other ways. And then we go to the arms. Uh, you've got the, the talons or you've got the, the fists. Originally, I was going to do this guy for my Imperial Fist, but I'm kind of like just got my head in the zone with the Dark Angel stuff at the moment. So, and then once in, I had a, a little bit of a, a brainwave. And obviously he does have the options for uh, bolt, I think it's bolt guns. Uh, I'm not too sure. In actual fact, let me just grab the, the Augustus Strike Force thing and let's have a look at the loadout. Um, so the Icarus Iron Hail Heavy Stubber is the thing that's mounted on him. So he can have uh, the Brutalis Fist, the Talon. Uh, the bolt or the melter, uh, or a twin bolt rifle, I believe. So, okay, cool. 
Or are they the fist weapons? Oh, I'm not sure now. Do you know what? I, I always struggle with the names and, and what's what. It's one of my... I really should pay attention a little bit more. I wish they would just write it on there. Be like, oh, if you want this one, do this one. But they never do. But um, obviously, if your arm's just going, once again, you're not supposed to glue them. You're supposed to move around. Once again, don't really see much point in that. Um, but I guess if you want to pose him daily, uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, and then it's kind of nice. They, they give you a load of purity seals by the looks of it to stick on there. So yeah, cool. Um, that's the instructions. Fairly straightforward. Uh, lots of nice... I like the, the way the armour panels are separate because obviously I'm going to be painting those separate um, to get a better finish with them. So it's easier to add the panels in afterwards, uh, which is cool. So I think uh, that's definitely a big thumbs up from me. Uh, especially like up here, you can see all the, the, the chest plates and stuff like that. So... <clears throat> Let's let's look at the the sprues quickly. You've got it's it's you've got a big double or a little one or really it's it's three little ones. Um, if we do just, dun, 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 I always like to have a look at this. Uh, where are they? I point this out every single time to people. See these little pins, pricks in sprues. These are revision marks, so you can actually see how much trouble a sprue gives someone. So this one has uh, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight so it has eight revision marks so before this was even produced it went through quite a few revisions and obviously normally the average is about four or five this is eight so maybe a little bit more troublesome but it's kind of got three sprues we'll, we'll separate this one now here you've got the the first one this is a lot of the um the upper chassis obviously you've got the sarcophagus sarcophagi i don't know what that is um the plural of <clears throat> Obviously, there's the, the iron hail and some of the nipple guns here and here. Obviously, both sides. You've got these separate panels to surround for the sarcophagus. Once again, as always, it's that really nice detail that GW just really always do very, very well. Um, yeah, nice. Uh, next one, this looks like shoulder sections. So you see you've got the shoulder pads here. You've got the back. Um, you've also got the choice of chest plates. Uh, which I, I'm always, I, I like that they do that. You've just got a choice of chest plates. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so you can go which which whatever one suits you. I think I like this one. I think I'm going to go with that one. Um, and then obviously your leg sections. You've got some extra purity seals and fingers, things like that. Some more little bits and stuff like that. And then we go over to the last sprue, which is the feet, um, by the looks of it. So you've got the... One foot there. I think he's one of his other foots on uh, one of the other sprues, maybe. Uh, or am I just being really blind? Uh, there's part of the leg there. Unless one foot always has to be flat on the floor, so you have to make the other one. Uh, it could be the other possibility there. Um, I see he's got parts of his fists there. Have, have I been really blind there? Am I not just seeing another foot anywhere? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't even see toes. Oh, wait, yes. No, there is. Look, there you go. So one foot is always kept flat on the floor because obviously the options of having the left foot or right foot forward. And those are your thing. That could be a little bit problematic if you are planning on posing him. Uh, you'll always have to have what kind of one foot definitely flat on the floor. So if you're going for like a running pose, um, I don't know whether they'll alter that for the multi-part kit when this is released separately, but it is worth noting that you get one flat foot and then you get one kind of foot section. So there's some of the toes there to, um, to do it that way. So that's just something to be aware of if you are planning on altering the pose of your Brutalis Dreadnought. Um, but that's really it. It is, it's... I guess seventy five percent a normal redemptor kit with just the um everything kind of shuffled around uh to get it all onto the sprues, so nice and easy shouldn't be too problem. I don't ever remember having a problem with redemptors. I think one was the easy to build i, I my first one was an easy to build the second was a multi part kit and i I always remember it going together quite well um I like the way redemptors look I like the big bulky frame I do think they're really really cool. Um, but
but let's talk a little bit about what I'm going to do with mine. Um, obviously, Dark Angels at the moment. Everyone's doing Dark Angels. Your nan's doing Dark Angels. So what I did was I got the free miniature of the month, the, the little assault eye. And, and what I've done is I've kind of painted them up like this. I've actually just recently changed one of the shoulder pads to a Deathwing shoulder pad. Because what I have done is I've got an assault intercessor and I've painted them up in Deathwing colours. So I thought it would be kind of cool to be like, oh, well, he is the leader of the Deathwing, or is going to be. The reason why he's got a shoulder pad? Because he's got a shoulder the burden, obviously. Um, so I thought have him as kind of like the sergeant. That's kind of cool. He's got the correct loadout as well and stuff like that. I can just paint the four Deathwing guys. But what I would do with my little Dark Angels force is by adding the, the touch of the bone armour, which is really iconic. I think it's really iconic. Um, I th I'm thinking what I might do is I might quarter the Dreadnought. So do him half the dark green colour scheme and half the bone colour, um, but quarter him around. So it looks like they're almost like a bit of a shared faction. So like they're, they're kind of each kind of esconded to that type of, I guess, unit, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm I'm doing in my head. I'm kind of thinking, well, this is like a little band of, you know, dark angels that are off and they, they always go off together because they're best friends. Everyone's lovely friends. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only friendship. So they, they, they go off together on their little space adventures and things like that. And I guess that, that kind of plays into like why the blade guard is, you know, he's not the, the Deathwing colours. He's the Dark Angels colours with, like, Deathwing shield and vice versa. And that theme kind of fits my little force. So that's what I thought I would do. So that's that's what I'm going to be doing. So let's have a little look. Let's start clipping some bits out. And uh, we'll, we'll see what we can get done today. Um, I think this is... I always think with reviews and stuff like this, it's a little bit easier, isn't it, doing it live? Because when, you know, people watch, they can ask questions straight away, which is always good because, you know, they might miss something that you don't pick up on. Um, but also, like, looking back when people watch it as well, um, they come back and they're like, oh, well, you know, what was this? And you can run back and have a look and answer those questions. So it kind of makes up a, a good little, I guess, compilation of information. Uh, it's something that I, I quite think. So I'm just going to start unclipping this guy. Um, I, do, I do wonder about the Dreadnoughts uh, with 10th edition kind of looming obviously we saw that uh one with the the like the, the the rocket launcher on his arm which i thought would look really really cool um so it's interesting to see that in the trailer we saw the uh, librarian in power armor and today games workshop has previewed the uh librarian in power armor from that video so it looks like most of the units that were in that video will probably end up being in the 10th edition box set, which I think is pretty cool. So it'd be interesting to see how they do that. Um, obviously, my only gripe with stuff like this is how many kits do you need with different loadouts before really you could just do a bog standard kit and do all the arms as an upgrade sprue. That's, you know, my kind of thing you know there's a lot of tanks like the, the impulsor and then you've got like the gladiator and a punisher and it uses the same ch chassis um yes the new librarian does look super nice i like how they've made him like really bulky looking like that is a, a big win i really like how they've done that that is that's definitely right up my alley with how i envision a terminator to look like like i've, I've never done aside from my my world eaters terminators which was the chaos terminators I've I've never painted any Terminators. I painted a, a one-off Deathwing Knight about four, two years ago, and um, it was a lot of fun. Um, but I, I've I've never painted like a generic Terminator, so I'm I'm looking forward to picking some up. I I hope they're in the tenth edition box set. That would be super cool. Um, I do just hope they handle the um, box set a little bit better than they handled. The lion. <laughs> yeah, he's going there. Like it was awful. It it was it was a really bad experience on Saturday morning. Not like bad like for you know anyone else's fault. It was just like GW being typical GW, just you know, where was the queuing system? 
I've seen them online now for, you know, some of them. One of them was like nearly like a £1,000. And it's like, you're bonkers. Um, but do you know what? If, if people want to spend their money on that, then do you know what? Then scalpers are always going to exist. You know, it, it's a bit of an odd one, isn't it? Because if, if someone said like, oh, you know, just pick an extra up, you've got the extra cash and, you know, make 50 quid on it. Uh, you know, I, I think morally most people... They can say that go, you know, that, oh, you know, scalpers are the worst. But I think if someone turned around and went like, oh, you've just bought that. Well, I'll give you an extra 50 quid on top of it. We'd probably go, yeah, all right. I think it's the excessive markup that, that's the problem. Because they do, they, they they prey on the FOMO. But then that's no different to what GW do, uh, in all honesty, is it? You know, they they, they prey on the FOMO. So that's nice. Obviously, the little chasse sections have pegs, so they just kind of slot in, which is quite good. Uh, some big chunky contact points on there, as you can see. Um, but I don't think you are going to see much of that. And then he goes just in here. Uh, like, um, I think this, he goes there. So that is the, the main bit. I always like to dry fit stuff. I'm a bit of a sucker for doing stuff like that. Just have a quick sip of tea and we'll uh I think what in actual fact it tells you to do is put these two bits together first and then this. But I actually think if you lined this up with one of those first and then slotted the other section around it, it would probably fit a lot better. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh just looking at it. Because obviously you can see he's got these these little pegs here that and what these are supposed to do just kind of sit there like that. So I think I'm gonna line that up first and then slot that one over it. I think that's gonna be the way to go. So I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Um, let me just make sure I have got that nice and... The last thing I want is the... Anything sticking out or anything like that. Uh, everyone, look, Mr. Sneaks has joined in the chat and I just wanna say congratulations because you recently got married. Um, I, congratulations, like absolutely so chuffed for you, buddy. Um, I did go through some of the pictures uh, on, on Facebook. It looks like you had an amazing day. So no, well done, much love to you and the new Mrs. Mrs. Sneaks. We can call her Mrs. Sneaks now, legitimately. Um, but no, yeah, absolutely well done, mate. Really, really chuffed for you. Um, so there we go. So let's just make sure that sits nice and there we go, about there. And then we can do the same for this side. Easy, that's much better. Why didn't why why isn't that a thing on the instructions anyway? So let's let's just do this. Let's just pop some of this on there. I did I was watching a film on uh, I like Shudder. I've got Shudder. Um it's the only streaming service I actually subscribe to. I love horror movies and stuff like that. And I started watching a film called The Banished. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Um, it's, it's really weird. Like, it's dragged out. I, I was in, really in the mood for, like, a like a proper haunted house kind of, uh, you know, scary, spooky. Ooh, yeah, the, the thing moved. Oh God. You know, where, you know, I just thought, I'll stick it on. And my God, it's one of the most boring fucking things I've ever watched in my life. It's part of my French. Um... So I've, I, I was kind of like, do you know what, I'm, I'm going to do the thing. I, I don't know what I've done with the bloody footage for this. I was talking about the sprues. I ripped the bloody script out. What I do is I don't have Microsoft Word on my one at home, so I use my work computer. Um, save the file. I'm sure I saved the file. Chances are I probably didn't save the file and just closed it down. Just through like muscle memory. No, I don't want to save, cancel, off it, you know, off it goes. And I don't know what I've done with the script. So I thought, do you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to redo all that. I'm just going to, I'll do it live. I'll do it all on the night, as they say. Um, now, these little bits here, you've got some little cables at the bottom. You don't actually have to put these on yet, if I remember correctly. You can actually put them on last, uh, which is good because it allows you to get around the back here to paint. Um, as long as you don't glue the, the actual top onto the legs, there's nothing stopping you from putting these cables on last, which I will probably do. Obviously, what I will do, 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 is... <clears throat> I will try and 
do it so I can spray as much stuff separately as possible uh, and work in assemblies as I often do because I, I just think it's a bit easier. I don't know how people, which is awful English, I'm really sorry, don't work in sub-assemblies. Um, like, how, how do people do it? It, it? It's an art form. When people make a whole model and paint it, I'm like, damn, that's a skill in itself. That and batch painting. Two things I've never been able to do. I, 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 I just, I don't know, maybe it's the OCD in me. I don't know, but I, I've never been able to do it, so... Um, yeah, I, it's just, you know, I, I think there's always that temptation to just get it together because you want to see it fairly complete. And I think that's why a lot of times you see people with grey models um, because they've, 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 they're eager to see it complete. Um, but then looking back, they're kind of like, oh, in actual fact, this is going to be quite, quite difficult to paint. Um, but I know, I know a lot of people that, that do it and uh, I'm always quite, like, amazed nice and snug oh we like that this one this guy's going to be a beast it's a big i always forget how big and chunky these are um which is cool i like i really like redemptors for anyone interested i'm just using tamiya extra thin it's my go-to um i think it's a great little product and i've never had a problem with it so that's what I'm, i'm i'm going to be using for the majority of bits so Plus, I really like the smell. I know it sounds weird. People are always like, especially I've noticed this on YouTube. If they, if they see you with like, not like I've got a mask on, they'll be like, hey man, it's bad. It's bad for you. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. You don't want to turn around and go, but I really love the smell on it because right now I'm probably off my tits. Um, you know, you, you can't say that. But I always thought it was quite strange how concerned people get for me, uh, which is obviously always really, really nice to see. But um that like like petrol like garage forecourts love them oh my god a bit weird like that um so then we need can we put these bits on next uh where are these big chunky side bits let's have a look um there's one so these bits are supposed to go on next which are, are down here. I'm not gonna do the gun sections yet. I'll do that later because that's a bit boring. Just it's two little guns, isn't it? So, um, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get away with putting these bits on first. Obviously, the the little guns are supposed to sit like in these runners, so they actually push in, and that's how they they kind of swivel. So, I'm not sure if I put these on. You might be able to see it from here. It's going to let me, because I think this has to sit quite tight around the gun, which is fine. I'll just keep them separately, uh, get everything spayed, complete the guns, and then glue these on almost like immediately. Um, but that is annoying, because I was hoping to get all the top bit in one section. However, you know, that's, that's sometimes life. Uh, where's the other section right just there? Okay, so let's just clip this bad boy out. God, some real big chunky contact points on this. I know it's a, a, a thick kit, but wow. I think it might be time to invest in some new clippers. Uh, I've, I just use the, these ones. And the spring's gone, so I, they're no longer spring-loaded. But I, I really like these. But I, I think they are coming towards their end of life. I've had them five years now, and they are uh, <laughs> to take a beating because I use them for like terrain and everything. Um, so I should probably invest in some decent clippers. Um, is it? Does, does anyone in the chat use uh, different clippers? Like, can you recommend any, or is it just a case of you know, just go with the cheap ones until they until they cease, and then uh. Go buy another pair, you know. Is is that the the general census, or is there like a? I know, like uh, there's one called like Master Clipper or, or something like that. Um, I'm not sure how good they are. Yeah, the Tamiya ones. I've heard good things about. I I did have a pair. Uh, in actual fact, I had them for about two years, and they were really really good. 
and they snapped on me one day. Like the, the cast from the actual blade just pew, pinged off, which I was really, you know, gutted about. Um, but then I got these and I've, I've never had a problem. I've, I've got another set and exactly the same thing happened. The spring has gone in them and they're just like almost <laughs> lever action, um, which is, you know, once again, frustrating, but also, you know, I understand it happens. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything in there. So this section I'll probably have to leave off or it depends on how the guns actually mount inside the little because I think they just sit on the outside. So what we might actually be able to do, looking at this, and this is one thing where you kind of have to reverse engineer these instructions sometimes. These are the, the, the little parts in question that sit in the, the runners, as you can see here. And what's supposed to happen by the looks of it is the guns just push into The, the the housing so nothing goes round it they just push into them so if that's the case i think i can put these in not worry about the weapons and still get the majority of this model assembled which is where i want it to be um so let's just unclip that would be the right one yep yeah. so i'm just gonna Unclip these, and we'll check. We'll see if we can get away with it. Uh, if we can't, we can't. If we can, can. Hopefully, it's someone else uh, will be like, "Oh, thanks for pointing that out." Um, I don't know whether you can all uh, hear what's going outside. It's the uh, the ice cream. <laughs> that calls around my way. He has uh, Elvis Presley, it's now or never. And that is how we entice kids around here. It's weird, isn't it? You can't say stuff like that. Um, but that's how we entice the children to our ice cream. Uh, so he sits in there like this. That's supposed to, that's quite tight in there. Wow. And then that is supposed to go there. Okay, so yes, we actually don't have to mount the guns. We can leave it like that. I think if we just get these in position first, which is, you know, I, I'll probably have them level like here because I don't think... Oh, no, look, what we can actually do... If that's dead tight, you can actually put them the wrong way around first. And you can actually move the run around. So even if that's on, you can actually feed it into there. Ah, oh, see, probably crisis averted. Don't worry, I'm talking out my ass. There we go. Which means we can actually glue these bits on and not have to worry about the, the weapons, which is what I originally wanted to do. So that's cool. So there you go. There's a little bit, a little tidbit for you. If you don't want to glue the weapons in, don't. You can actually just move them around and take it from there. And you know what? You can probably just do a few little tidy ups at the end and uh do it that way so let's uh let's get this guy on and it should start to i guess look like something do you never like marvel at just how ingenious instructions are sometimes i know you know they, they sometimes there's mistakes and people really do like to point out a mistake um but you know what for the most part the instructions are really clever but it just goes to show you actually if you just sit down, study them. And this is my first time looking really at this, um, like, you know, dead properly. Um, how, just how well, you know, you can actually jig it about and kind of come up with a, a slightly different way of doing things, um, which is definitely, um, I'm just looking at my, my, my chat to the right. Sorry, my screen keeps freezing. My internet's so bad where I am. Um, but yeah, it's it's almost like it makes you appreciate of like a like a good example Lego, like how they make Lego. You know that that's, that's got to be what do they do? Just make it and then take it apart bit by bit and reverse the reverse engineer the the instructions. So there we go. We're starting to look like something now. That's cool. I like that. Um, 
the sarcophagus. One thing I did notice, which I really wanted to point out, which I really, really like, is it's like he's got a big Dark Angels hat. Um, yes, they are. Uh, I, I put together a... It was a Hasegawa Subaru Legacy kit for my boss. And it was awful, the instructions. Like I, like I said, I know there's mistakes. And I know sometimes they make little boo-boos and stuff like that. But i, I got to admit, you, you really do need to appreciate sometimes that it could be a lot worse. I mean, just look at Forge World. Some of the Forge World instructions are a picture with stuff pointing to it with little lines. I mean, that's not really, you know, I, I, I to me, Forge World is, uh, is not something I would ever partake in, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, for the price you get, for the what you get, I think it could be a lot better. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, I think Forge World needs... Forge World to me is something that's always kind of sat in the... <sighs> the wrong time zone. Like, when it came out, I can imagine it was very good and it was very breathtaking and the, the models were great. However, now, um, to me, they, 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 they've, they've, the plastic kits have just overtaken them and I don't think there's... In, in my eyes, I think... GW really needs to look at where they are with Forge World. Now, that's not to say that they're specialist things like their, their Titans and their Warlords, which they're, they're pretty famous for, um, aren't good. They are. They're very good. They're very, you know, um, I just have my own separate issues with the pricing and the things like that. But yes, I, I do. You know, uh, Instructions for World have got lots. Yes, they have. Especially with the release of the Horus Heresy stuff, um, it's definitely got better. You know, I mean, they're in colour now, way, which is, you know, pretty special. Um, <laughs> but, so, um, right, so where are we? We've got the sarcophagus, and can we put the little top bit on? We want part number C8. So let's have a look. Uh, nope, not that one. It looks like... Um, not that one. It looks like, uh, all right, there's 13. Um, this is the only other problem I have is why can't it just be like one, two, three, four, five? I know they do it cleverly to fit more stuff in, um, which is great. Uh, I'm all for saving plastic and stuff like that, but surely they could <laughs> rejig it. Um, Number eight. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, custodes, dreads, unless put together. Uh, upgrades again. Do you know what? I think that's probably the best place for Forge World is specialist upgrade sprues. Um, and and the big stuff to me that that seems like the best option for them. Like why 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 try and dip your toes when the, the quality of plastic is just so much better? Um, there are so many good companies out there that make bits like third party bits that just blow Forge World out of the water. Stop trying to do all these little. Don't get me wrong, I love Necromunda, but all these awful resin kits that just you know, to me, just don't really do anything for me. Um, and, you know, let, let them go over to plastic and concentrate on, you know, those like gang upgrade sprues, you know, chapter upgrade sprues. Like, they, if they had the free run of it, it would just be perfect. Um, but they, you know, only time will tell on that front. So there we go. As you can see here, he's all lining up quite nicely. Like, that's minimal effort. Yes, um, I do, i got to admit, I do like seeing, I was like on the Thursday when they would show off the upgrade sprues. I think they're doing a lot of cool stuff for Horus Heresy, although it's not a game that I'm really interested in, but I like seeing all the Legion-specific stuff. I think that's really, really cool. Um, 
you know, more of that. I think that's where they get it really, really right. Um, so I, I, I do think that they should kind of focus their efforts in that regard. Um, but yeah, so we've, we've nearly got top section here. I am just going to have a look at the, the bottom bit. Now, I always remember here, it's got little pins because you're not supposed to glue the chassis section on. However, I don't know whether I will bother doing that because you're supposed to be able to open up his um, section to CV sarcophagus. However, I'm not that bothered about it because I'll probably just do it closed. Um, so I'm not overly concerned about doing it. So do I... Hmm. How is that supposed to go on? Now, let's... I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm not going to glue this section on because I'm going to show you all what I mean here. Um about this bit and I'm pretty sure this section like I said it's been a few years since I've done a Redemptor um, I'm pretty sure this bit goes together pretty but exactly the same oh is that what you know what I thought I'd seen that before that, that, that kind of icon, icon the, the Furioso. But no, I, I think it's, to me, it looks because they're doing Dark Angels and they've got them lovely big ats. Helmets, got to stop calling them ats. They're helmets, sorry. Um, I, I really like that. I thought that was quite cool, actually. So to me, that was kind of like almost like a very Dark Angel e, if you will, um, with their big helmets, not hats. Um, but what I mean about the next section is if we go just, I think it's on this one, it's part number 33 and 36, I want. Um, it's that bit there. See, I, I do wish they, they did more chapter-specific dreads and stuff like that. I, I really like that type of thing. Um, that's where I think GW would do really, really well, adding those little bits of flavour. But to me, and obviously I was a Space Wolf player for years, um, to me, sometimes GW or, or kind of feels that they, they struggle to know what they're to do with their own chapters. And that's the... Um, where I've always felt that they've gone a little bit wrong. Okay, what, 36, I'm not seeing this anywhere. Oh my God. Uh, right, there it is there. Now, I'm pretty sure, because we're supposed to not glue this together, there's two little pins on here, as you can see, because they, they have this, this nice sculpted detail on the inside. So let me just clean this up quickly and I'll show you what I mean. And yeah, like a nice upgrade blister or, you know, anything like that. Just more like the, like I love the upgrade sprues, like the Primaris upgrade sprues and stuff like that. Um, even if they did like a big bumper version of that, I think would be really, really good for, for the chapters. Because that way you would feel like, you know, ranges... And I, I pointed this out with my Primaris Lieutenant um, model. Is that when one model can cover so many ranges, because really when you think about it, there's no such thing as a Space Marine. Like, you don't go, you don't go, that's a Space Marine. You go, no, it's Dark Angel's Intercessor. You know, it's like referring to yourself as a human wherever you go. You're not, I'm I'm Rob, you know, that's the that person, how you identify. Um, and so I, I kind of like, I like the idea of them having kits that just can cover so many ranges, but like ranges that don't have a lot of bespoke 
characters or stuff like that, just having an upgrade sprue or like a blister that would just maybe, maybe it was like a big bumper pack would not only keep you going for longer, you could also, you know, build some really good characters and stuff like that. And, you know, that's why I think, you know, just big boxes of bits, if you will, like I think is a really good way of doing it. So, right, th this this is what I mean. So we have this. And as you can see, he, he's got these little pins. Now, what's supposed to happen is this glues round it. And obviously, that's what sits around the pins and allows it to move. I don't necessarily think we need to do that in this one because what we can actually do is if we line this up here, what we can do, uh, because it goes uh, this way, we can actually just put that in. Um, yeah, like that. And then glue that. Uh, well, that ah, see, that won't slide round, so we'd either have to alter that, or is that just me being a bit special? No, okay. But then how else would you... Oh, he has to slide in that way, okay. So it can be done, and then, all right, okay, I get it. So can we achieve that? So if that's in place there, what we have to do is slide this in here like that, and then that goes there like that. Once again, proving we actually don't have to follow the instructions because we don't want the armor panels on. So we can actually paint that separately. And then we can just actually, in fact, we can just pop that out. So once again, we've kind of busted out the uh, the thing here. Obviously, I would rather keep the armor panel all separate so I can spray them to get a nice smooth finish on them. Um, so in actual fact, we only have to glue this bottom plate on, um, which is great. Definitely, once again, another big win there. I'm taking that. So let's just pop this in here. And let's just glue this guy together here. He's got just on these. And that's just gonna go like that. So there we go, there's a few little things. If you like working in sub-assemblies, much like myself, um, have a real good look at the instructions because do you know what, there's a lot you can get away with not doing to make it a bit easier for yourself. Like this is all gonna be sprayed one color, this will all be sprayed uh, silver. Um, so there we go. And that's where he sits on the leg section, I believe. So we can actually not worry about that. And there's most of the top done. Uh, I do just want to put his, I'm not going to do the armor panel, C9, which is the top bit. Now this is a bit that we will have to stick on, I believe. So let's just chop this out. And let's see where this goes. Oh. So once again, this is why it takes me so long to build anything, because I'm literally always scrutinizing the <laughs> instructions. So that we've got little pins in there that we don't want to remove, which is fine. Let's just... And this just sits here like this. So it sits in those gaps. So it is a bit of a snug fit because we already glued it in, but in actual fact, ah, it lines up perfectly. Look at that, which is the top section. Now, I probably could leave that out. I don't think I need to worry too much about leaving that in because that's just where the, the mount goes, uh, the weapon, which is then mounted 
on this internal bit and obviously sits above it. So uh, it's armour panels, armour panels, that's armour panels. We pick the front chassis, uh, we make the top gun, and then it is down to the lower section. So there's a lot in actual fact that we can skip. So obviously that bit we can leave out. We're not going to put these panels on. We're not going to put those panels on. We're not going to put this on. Obviously, we didn't have to put any of the guns in or this section. Uh, we're not going to put this little flap thing on here. We don't need to because we can do that afterwards, which means we can have it as a separate armor panel piece, which is good. Uh, guns. Um, so the iron hail. And then these bits we can keep separately because they're armor panels, which is great. That I think we can keep separate. I'm not too worried about that. And then really we can move down to the leg section. We are flying now. Wow, look at that. So let's have a, a bit of tea. I think I've earned that. Oh, it's a good brew. It's a bloody good brew. Um, so let's just move these bits over. I don't want to lose any of these bits. I know what I'm like. I'll probably sneeze or something. Um, and I am just going to put this bit with that so I know they're all together. So all the bits that we've managed to not do, I'm just going to put in a pile over there, don't worry about it. Um, and then we'll just put our little body. I am just going to go through some of those gaps as Tamiya is a great way as well uh, filling gaps in case you didn't know. So I'm just going to some of the edges just make sure everything's nice and attached we want this to be a nice big solid bit and i think that will do i see like i said some some real big that's the only thing i, I did notice is some real big chunky contact points to this guy like you can see where I've had to chop them. I mean, that's dead flat. You can tell because I can run my blade over it. But uh, there is actually a way to avoid those little white things. Um, this is something I, I learned when I, I was doing Gundam models many, many years ago. It, the reason why you do that is because you stress the plastic because you cut so near to the eye, actual piece. Uh, you're not actually supposed to do that. And I'll show you on the next piece what I mean. Um... So let's cut off his, his torso section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut down here. I'm going to cut really, really close to it, and you'll see what I mean. So we'll cut that, and then what you're supposed to do is cut the top of the contact points to leave some of the sprue in there. So you can see here straight away the bit that I... I cut really close has left like a, a big white stress mark on the plastic which is fine you know you, you can trim them off it doesn't really make a difference sometimes you get like a small dip in them but you can see these bits here that have sprue like sticking out of them and what you're actually supposed to do is now trim those off just gently and what you'll find is you don't get the, the dip in the sprue and you don't stress the plastic out. And that's what they say. See? Compared to that. Which is, once again, smooth. But there's a, there's a little, little hobby tip for you there. Um, i, I got to admit, I, I very rarely do that. I'm always cutting stuff dead flat. I am going to trim these off now. I've shown you. How to do it as well uh, but that is an old gundam trick uh for do it uh, i can't remember where i found that from actually uh i think it was a guy named brick builder I mean, he just does time lapses of gundam build sometimes i watch them uh, when i go to bed uh it's ironic really because i don't watch a lot of hobby channels uh on youtube i did have a, a guy um when I did the thing about me coming up with a method of like slap chop the work stuff like that, and I was like, "Whoa, there! You're just assuming I watch the same stuff as you." I watch uh, 
gameplays of games. I like I like uh, RPG challenge runs and stuff like that. One because they they, they tend to be quite long, and I, I just I kind of like that that I guess odd background noise. Very rarely do I watch hobby stuff on YouTube. Like unless someone sh directly sends me a video normally on Instagram and go like, oh hey, you should check this out. Uh, I, my feed is completely non-hobby on YouTube. We should think, oh, it is quite strange, but no, that's just the way I, I, I kind of do. I, my other interests are, um, I love, for people that don't know, I love PlayStation 1 era RPGs. I think they are just amazing. From Breath of Fire 3, Alondra, Wild Arms, you name it. I've probably played it. I've pr probably played a fair few of them. Uh, there's only a few on the PS1 I think I haven't played, um, but absolutely love that that era of RPG gaming. Um, just something magical and special about it. Um, so that is what I spend a lot of my time <laughs> looking at. Uh, so there we go. Anything with SNES style graphics, I am just a sucker for. Uh, it reminds me very much of growing up. I had a Mega Drive, my brother had a Super Nintendo. Always very jealous of the games he would get. Um, it just seemed like there was so much cool stuff on Nintendo. I just loved SNES style graphics. Not to say that the Mega Drive or Sega Genesis, uh, for my American friends, uh, wasn't good. It was a fantastic console, and you know Sonic was, you know, very much my first love. But I I loved the uh, Super Nintendo. So there we go. So he's got this little spike thing in here that's slightly off center. And what he does is he sits there, so you kind of get that cool motion. So if you do want to have that straight, what you're going to have to do is cut that pin off there. Um, otherwise, you know, you leave him. He, he looks a bit uh, like Ed 209 came, Robocop 2 kind of style there with the, 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 the crooked torso. But there we go. I actually might trim him. I might do him a bit more straighter. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll see, because he can't really go any other way. It's either that way or nothing. Okay, well, we won't trim anything off just yet, because if I do make a mistake and there's something I've missed, I can't put it back on, but I can take it off later. So let's go down that road. So there's that. Uh, once again, we can clip these bits on. He's got some sections around him. That doesn't need glue, that doesn't need glue. I don't think it matters which way around that's gonna go. And then we start making the leg sections. Okay, now the leg sections, obviously you've got half of the, the legs are metal. The other half, there is actually isn't anything to them. So you make them, uh, especially like here, and you are forced to have these sculpted on armor panels. Not the end of the world, you know, it could be a lot worse. Um, there isn't that many of them on the miniature. So I, you know, I think I can live with this quite easily. Um, same again with this section here. And then everything else just goes on. But for now, we need to put these little collar sections around his legs. Uh, this is to uh, bulk out. And I think this is where we, we actually end up with our, our leg positioning. Uh, further in the instructions. So let's just take these out. There should be four of these. And the other thing we need are these little pins. There's one. There's two. There's three. And then the other one is right over here. So let's do this guy. And then we need these little pins, which are, you've got one here. These are ones that connect to the legs. There's one. And is that on another sprue? Is it this one? Yeah, it's on this one. So there it is, just up there. Once again, very clever design work. I don't know why they tell you, you know, it's because you have the position of the legs, you can position them either way. But why weren't these just, you know, fit into place? I'm sure they could have done 
you know, more less pieces. But then I suppose, you know, people adapt them and stuff like that. But these collars just slide around this little section here. You get one and two. Obviously, one has a little ball joint, one doesn't. You pop them in there. And then what you need to do is the little pins do just sit in between them. And then these actually move. So no matter which way you have your legs, you know, they, they you can adjust them and it lines up. And he's got them cool winching system. I don't know. I just imagine there's a guy in there with like no legs and he's pulling strings and making it walk. But that's just me. Uh, so yeah, that is that bit. Once again, that goes on there. Uh, you are not supposed to glue some of these sections. However, I might, because I'm a rebel. Um, could you imagine if that, those were his legs and he was just like, Oi! Oi! What's going on here? Um, have you seen the machine crew for scale models? Never right the other. Uh, no, I haven't. Not machine and crew. To be fair, I might have seen them. Um, but I don't recognise that name. So, I think, are they the ones with like the big mech walking war suits? And they're always like, you know, they've got the pilot outside of them and stuff like that. They're quite detailed kits. Is, 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 is they, are they the ones? Um, I'm not sure. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they are. They're all like smooth and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so if the Redemptor just had little legs like this, like, could you imagine? And he was just running after you like this. Oh no, he's got a leg off. And he was just running. I think we should just leave him like this, actually. Call him Little Tony. Little Tony, the, the angry dread. Yeah, I, I've, I, I do know the ones you're on about then. Yeah, they've, I've, I've seen them a few times. They're a little bit pricey. Um, but damn, they do some good stuff. Um, yes, they are the ones that I've, I'm thinking of. But do they have little legs like this? I bet they don't. Look at these little bad boys. Oh no, God! It's like, come on. There we go. Uh, so I think what I'll do is I, I will glue these round um, because I don't think they're going to make too much of a difference. So let me trim these up. And I think what I might do is, because uh, I really, I, I kind of like thought I'd, I'd pop on and be like, oh yeah, I'll make it, it won't take long at all. And now we're nearly an hour <laughs> in. I might pop back tomorrow and do the rest of the arms. So if anyone's interested in popping back tomorrow and watching me finish this guy, and I don't know, talking through the intro, if that's what you really want to do with your life, and you know what, you're absolutely welcome here. If you want to spend your evening with me while I talk about shortcuts and other ways to do the instructions, then you know what? You are more than welcome. Um, I've done well. I've tried not to swear this one because I'm, I'm a YouTube partner and uh, I'm trying not to swear on my streams. But it's incredibly difficult. So, um, yeah, I'll probably go out and after this and just <laughs> scream into a pillow. <laughs> Normally I'm not this calm when I make stuff. So, uh, but I think we'll we'll finish this little collar section, and I think we'll definitely uh, we'll leave it there for today. But let's just do this first, one thing at a time. So there we go, and the last one, which is <gasps> gone. Oh shit! What have I done with that? Oh, it's still on there. Look at me, idiot. So let's just do this, okay. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very precisely use my contact adhesive. Do you like the way I said that? Contact adhesive. And I'm going to, so let's get one pin in like this. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit there. You're gonna need a little bit. Don't be greedy, a bit like that. Now it doesn't matter which way around these go, I don't think. So let's just go one there. And uh, one there. 
This is when I find out I've done them completely the wrong way around or something because I haven't looked. No, we're good. This is the way they go. Don't worry. No. No, we don't. No, it's this way. No, stop. Okay, everyone worry. Jesus Christ, what am I doing? Okay, so that goes there like that. It's a little bit fiddly, but uh, look at that. We're laughing. And all we're going to do is just make sure we turn it a few times so nothing sticks. And everything moves nice and easy. There we go. I'll be disheartened if his, his, his little legs seize up. So there we go. So there's that one. Uh, I might add some adhesive over that at the end, but we'll see. Same again. I'm just going to just really gently, not too much, pop the pin in. And then I'm just going to, with my rather fat fingers, just go one and two like that. And once again, I'm going to turn it a few times, make sure nothing sticks. That's the last thing we want. Okay. I think we should be good there. Really, what I should have done is probably use super glue on those bits. I'm not so worried. Uh, we'll just keep turning them. This one's nice and spot on. Same with that one. That's nice. It turns nice and easy. And obviously the pins are attached to it. So there we go. That shouldn't come loose. That's quite stiff, that one. So let's just keep turning that a few times. I don't want any of the adhesive to... Uh, there we go. I've just felt it. It will dry out really, really quickly. And if I keep turning it, it's just going to... There we go. And that is where the legs will obviously inevitably attached to. So I think we'll we'll call it there. I think I did quite well actually for an hour. That's pretty quick for me. Um, we have a top bit, we have a torso, but you know what? We've had a fantastic time together. Well, I have. Um, there we go. I think what I'll do is tomorrow we'll come back. I will do the leg sections. We'll finish off the legs or I might, I might finish off the legs. I might get up early tomorrow morning and do the legs. Uh, but tomorrow I will come back and we'll do the arms together. How about that? Because really, that's the, the 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 meat, isn't it, to the Britannis? It's all about the arms, the claws. We're all doing claws. Everyone does claws. I just want to point something out as well about the double power fist and the claws. If you actually go to his rules, and I'm not a stickler for rules, but I did notice this. So if you look here, the fist... Strength times two, AP minus three, D3 damage plus three. Each time an attack was made with this weapon, select one of the profiles below. Uh, blah, blah, sorry, right. anyway, so that, that's fine. But if you go for the Talon, you get the choice of a strike or a sweep. The strike being strength times two, AP minus four, D3 plus three. And you can re-roll, uh, each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, you can re-roll the wound roll. So if you fail your to wound rolls, you get to re-roll it. Um, same again with the sweep. It's minus three, okay, flat one. Each time an attack is made with this weapon profile, make two hit rolls instead of one. So he actually gets 10 attacks on the sweep, uh, which is really, really good at AP minus three. Why would you take the fist over the talon? You wouldn't. There's, there's, there's not much. Like to me, I would have done like the Brutalis fist just does a lot more damage because then you would go, well, do you know what? It ain't much cop. But you know what, if it gets through, you do a load of damage. Whereas the Talon is a bit more like, you know. I can't imagine these things are that agile. Um, good evening, Josh. How are you today? Um, but that's what I was I was kind of looking at. And it just baffled me a little bit. Because in every sense of the word, the Talon was a lot better. Um, obviously, that soon probably will change because we're getting rid of bye-bye power levels. We're going over to points. Um, so I just thought it was a little bit... Um, strange it, it didn't seem to make much to me but then once again i'm not a big rules player josh uh i am gonna skedaddle in a minute um no it's all right it was a bit of an impromptu one i did pop it up i was like i had some time i wanted to go for the brutalis kit I, I seem to have lost my script for the video 
So I was like, do you know what? I'll just do it all in a live and just do a part one and part two, whatever. But Josh, look at his little legs. That that's what that's how he's gonna be. He's got little legs. And he runs after you like this. Like a little chicken. Like someone please make a little robot chicken out of this. I think it's amazing. Um and that's what I've been doing for an hour, is just amusing myself with little tiny <laughs> look. That's quite sorry looking, isn't it? It's like a real one, only smaller. Anyway, so that's where we are. We've made that, we've made that. We've realised you don't need to clip on any of the armour parts. Don't do it. Don't don't let GW do it to you. You don't need to clip on your armour parts. Um, I might actually spray all these silver um, now, just so I'm ahead of myself, nice and organised, and take it from there. But literally, that is it. Thanks to... Um, Everyone did stop by uh, to say hello. Uh, I am going to leave it there because I'll see it's getting a little bit late now. Um, what's the time? Eight o'clock. Wow, it's an hour past my bedtime. Um, yeah, th this was a bit of an impromptu one that <laughs> it did go on. I will do this again tomorrow and build the rest of it so we can see how the fists go together and stuff like that. And then I might do another one where I just switch on the live while I'm painting it in dribs and drabs and things like that but yes that's where we are so look thanks to everyone that did stop by and stuff like that uh mr sneaks tv uh, my good friend deacon once again congratulations on getting hitched um it's been it's been a lovely uh, evening in your company uh josh obviously thanks again for popping up anyone is there penge if you're still there once again thanks for stopping by um my tea's gone stone cold but i'm gonna drink it anyway because that's how I live my life um, so yes I will probably see you all tomorrow enjoy this uh, sorry it's gone on a bit long uh, sorry if you're watching this from the future as well it's a long video um, that's life deal with it um, but that's it from me in this one I'll see you all next time God bless and take care <laughs>